Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be comparing two SNRI antidepressants, Prestique Desvenlafaxine and Effexor Venlafaxine. So stay tuned. So when you're comparing two antidepressants or two medications, you want to look at several different factors and compare their similarities and their differences. So we're going to go over a few of those in this video, starting with how they work. So Effexor or Venlafaxine is an SNRI or serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. And it actually has more affinity for the serotonin receptors and doesn't really start acting as a norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor until the dosages go above 225 milligrams. Desvenlafaxine is also an SNRI and it's actually the active metabolite of venlafaxine. It too has more affinity for serotonin receptors, but a lot less than venlafaxine. So Effexor or venlafaxine has an affinity of 30 to 1. 30 serotonin to one norepinephrine, where desvenlafaxine or Prestique, the ratio is 10 to one. The other thing here is with desvenlafaxine or Prestique, the norepinephrine action of the medication is seen at the low therapeutic dose of 50 milligrams. Whereas, like I mentioned earlier, with venlafaxine, you actually need to go above 225 milligrams to start experiencing the benefits of the norepinephrine increase. Now, because both of these medications are SNRIs, they're going to increase dopamine in the prefrontal cortex because dopamine has a greater affinity for those norepinephrine transport systems. And there aren't many dopamine transport systems in the prefrontal cortex. The other thing here is that venlafaxine comes in immediate release formulation and extended release formulation where desvenlafaxine is just an extended release formulation. Now I wouldn't recommend using venlafaxine in immediate release formulation because it has such a short half-life that many patients will experience interdosing withdrawal symptoms if they're on the immediate release venlafaxine. And so number two, we wanna look at what are they used for? So venlafaxine or Effexor was the first SNRI that came out and was FDA approved in 1997. And it's been approved for major depressive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, and panic disorder. Desvenlafaxine was approved in 2008, and its only FDA approval is major depressive disorder. Now we're gonna look at those common side effects. So with venlafaxine or Effexor, you most commonly will have nausea, insomnia, dizziness, somnolence, dry mouth, muscle weakness, sweating, anorexia, constipation, diarrhea, or nervousness. There aren't many reports of weight gain and nothing in the literature that I could find on weight gain. However, weight loss is more of a factor. And this was seen a lot in the pediatric studies that they did. So even though this medication is not approved for pediatric depression or anxiety, they did some tests in that population early on and found that it actually caused a lot of weight loss in up to 47% of children and adolescents was up to 7% of adults who took venlafaxine reported weight loss. Now, when it comes to sexual dysfunction, if you look at the FDA label for venlafaxine, it'll say anywhere from five to 10%. However, in clinical practice, I see that that is actually a lot greater. The primary issue that is seen with venlafaxine when it comes to sexual dysfunction is the delayed ejaculation. And that becomes problematic in a lot of the patients, which is why they'll switch this medication. When you look at desvenlafaxine or Prestique, the common side effects seen are somnolence or insomnia and hyperhidrosis, which is that profuse sweating. So a lot less side effects than you see with venlafaxine in that regards. And when it comes to weight gain, same thing, not really many reports of weight gain. And they say about 2% of patients will report weight gain, but most report weight loss. When it comes to sexual dysfunction, there is sexual dysfunction reported with desvenlafaxine, but it is actually less than venlafaxine. And some studies have shown that when you compare the two together, desvenlafaxine actually has a lower incidence of sexual dysfunction. And this is reported between one to 6%. This is also dose dependent. So the higher you go with desvenlafaxine, the greater the chance of the sexual dysfunction. Now, some considerations here with both of these medications are very similar. 
So you want to check for drug interactions. So you want to remember that venlafaxine is primarily metabolized by the CYP2D6, where desvenlafaxine is mostly metabolized by the kidneys and minimally metabolized by the CYP3A4. Now, when you get into those higher dosages of Pristique or, or desvenlafaxine and you're going above 100 milligrams, it can have some inhibition on the CYP2D6. So just make sure you're looking for inhibitors or inducers of these substrates and checking for drug interactions. Another thing you wanna consider with these medications is the incidence of hypertension or high blood pressure. And this is commonly seen in the elderly. So if you're a person above the age of 65 years old, you're gonna be at a greater risk for experiencing high blood pressure on either of these medications. This is seen with both desvenlafaxine and venlafaxine, but more with venlafaxine when the dose is above 200 milligrams. And also there's that risk of bleeding that you get with all of the antidepressants. So make sure that if you're taking NSAIDs like ibuprofen or aspirin, or if you're on blood thinners, that you're checking for increased bleeding, bruising, and things of that nature. Of course, there's the suicidal ideation that is the black box warning on all of the antidepressant labels. And this is typically associated with the pediatric population up to young adults, up to the age of 24. There's also the risk of serotonin syndrome. And as I discussed in the video on serotonin syndrome, you wanna make sure that you're looking at the medications that you're taking and seeing if they can potentially also increase serotonin and then monitor for those symptoms of serotonin syndrome. And with the SNRIs, that risk tends to be a little more increased than the SSRIs, so be aware of that. So the last consideration that I want you guys to think about with both of these medications, venlafaxine and desvenlafaxine, are the withdrawal symptoms. And both of them are categorized as high risk when it comes to antidepressant withdrawal syndrome. And so therefore, if you're on either of these medications for longer than a month, three months, you're gonna wanna make sure to taper off very, very slowly and do so under the direction of a prescriber who is well versed on how to de-prescribe. Some other things to consider are some contraindications. If you have uncontrolled angle closure glycoma, you shouldn't be taking either of these medications because it can make that condition worse. Also, if you take MAOIs, you definitely do not want to take them concurrently with any antidepressant for that matter. So you want to avoid the monoamine oxidase inhibitors because they also come with the risk of serotonin syndrome and hypertensive crisis. So last but not least, my final thoughts. And when it comes to Pristique and desvenlafaxine, though they both have a lot of robust research on the treatment of major depressive disorder and even for generalized anxiety disorder, I do not use these very commonly in my practice, neither of these medications. Why? Because of that risk for withdrawal symptoms. That risk is very high. And what I find is when patients do come to me and they're on either of these medications, it is a lot of work to get them off slowly with minimal withdrawal symptoms. No matter how slow we go, they still tend to have some withdrawal symptoms. And this becomes a huge problem when you have someone who's on either of these medications, they're at the highest dose, it's not working, and you need to switch them to something else it can create problems. And so I try to avoid prescribing either of these medications and only using them as a last resort. So there you have it. That wraps up the comparative review of venlafaxine versus desvenlafaxine or Effexor versus Pristique. Did you enjoy the video and find some value in it? If so, go ahead and like this video and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And if you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section below. And as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I look forward to seeing you all next week.